that might be a flounder. It is. Flounder. Uh, it looks like a keeper. There we go. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to another video. So you might be able to tell I'm out here in the ocean doing some flounder fishing. We just got our first bite of the day from flounder. We've caught a few black bass already, but just out here on some, I think we found some live bottom and uh, we're only about a mile, maybe a mile and a half off the beach right here. And uh, first fish of the day came pretty early. Good to see that they're out here. I don't think this one's gonna keep. They have to be 14. He's about 16, but I think I'm gonna throw him back for good luck and hopefully get some bigger ones. First fish of the day, feels good to get him in the boat. He's going back in, back down. There he goes. Uh, last year, we did this same type of thing. We came out in the ocean and I filmed a great video. So if you guys haven't checked that out, definitely go and check that out. But I'm using the same thing as I was last year three quarter ounce jig head on a five inch z-man diesel minnow last year what we did is we we stopped at this one spot it was like a big ledge and we would stop and not even anchor or anything we would just drift and the conditions were perfect for that because we were able to use the current and there was basically no wind and we were just able to use the current to kind of slowly drift us over the spot and we were just able to drop straight down and jig and that bait even though we weren't casting it and moving it that much we we're still drifting and so that bait was able to just hop across the bottom waiting for flounder to be under us. But right now it's a little bit too windy and we're just moving a little bit too fast to do that. And so we're anchored up, basically just fan casting around the boat. Well, we got some live bait as well. So we might try that on some Carolina rigs if we don't get many more bites or at least any big ones. But good to see we're, we're doing the right stuff. We had already came out here uh, two days ago. Conditions were a little bit worse the, the first time but we didn't catch anything at all besides black bass and like weak fish and stuff like that but no no flounder the first time we came out in the ocean so so it feels good to get out here and actually get a bite so we're gonna keep doing this and hopefully we can replicate that in some other areas we might jump around to some different spots today but good to get a bite early on in the day hopefully since we let them go it'll be good luck and we can catch some more this is like day six i think i think we're about um six days into flounder season and we're basically like halfway through it's gonna be done by i think next wednesday or something it's currently labor day monday right now so I hope everyone has a good labor day stay tuned and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video So we just pulled up to our second spot of the day. I just grafted over some some areas. We basically all we're doing is we came to a little reef. Uh, we're not using anything too special as far as you know the mapping goes. Basically, we, we have this like little paper map paper map right here, um, and it just has a bunch of little spots on it, ledges, uh, reefs, you know, wrecks and stuff like that. And we enter the coordinates, and then we go to the spot. We graph around, look for some, look for some areas, look for some fish on the bottom, mark the spot, and then go up a little bit in front of it, drop the anchor, and try to you know figure out which way the the current and the tide is going and stuff, and see how we're gonna drift and where we're gonna set up once we set the anchor on it. Uh, we let the anchor down, and basically what I'm looking for, as you can see right here, there's just like a little bit of a reef or something, there's some structure on the bottom, and you can see there's some some bait and fish around it and stuff. So we're gonna try to fish here. It looked like the anchor set us up perfectly where i wanted to be so that's awesome we're gonna cast around see if we can get some y'all stay tuned and let's see if we can get some more flounder all right y'all so we just finished fishing our i think third spot of the day no bites from flounder we caught plenty of black bass i tried live bait i tried artificials little paddle tail baits and nothing nothing on that let me try drifting see if we can cover water better nothing there so we're gonna try another spot and if that doesn't work i really don't know what to do but hopefully that one that i let go earlier isn't gonna haunt me for the rest of the day because it's looking like that might happen but fingers crossed we're gonna see if we can get some more y'all stay tuned and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video we're about to go over this ledge here we fished it a few times and so we can see the contour lines of the ledge a little bit but should go over it here in a second and there it is so it drops from about 40 to 45 foot we're just gonna start dropping down seeing if we can catch some of these flounder we're gonna try to drift at first we're gonna see how the drift is like i said earlier i like drifting a little bit more because basically you just drop down and the boat will move and you'll be jigging along the bottom 
and it's a little bit easier than casting. You can do it for longer if the drift is the right way, but if the drift's perfectly along the ledge, I think that could be good. But if it's kind of uh, going straight over it, we'll probably just anchor, cast around, and then if we don't get any bites, pick up, and just keep doing that along the whole ledge. That might be a flounder. Uh, I don't know. Yep. Get in the boat. There we go, y'all. Alright. There's the second flounder of the day, finally. He's probably barely a keeper. He's about 14. Thank you, buddy. All right, well, same deal as the last one. Little paddle tail. We switched to a one ounce jig head because we're drifting and we're moving a little bit faster. Yeah, just drifting on some ledges. Finally got flounder number two of the day. Hopefully he has some bigger brothers down there to, to bite. That might be another one, Dad. Yep, it's another one. That's a good one, too. Here. Get it, get it, get it, get it. That was like, next drop. Let's go, finally. Oh my God. Mark that spot. Finally. Yes. Oh my gosh. All right, guys, we freaking got him. Our first, well, really the second keeper of the day, but better one finally let's go we'll get an exact measurement on him right now but he's definitely a keeper he's about 19 and a half nice fish he's better go on the ice right there y'all that's what i'm talking about yes thank you buddy drifting we're covering water and again same same bait just that little paddle tail five or yeah five inch diesel minnow Z-Man diesel minnow on a one ounce eye strike. I think it's a striper head, jig head, but it works great for flounder as well, so sweet. We're about to probably turn around and get back onto that same drift that we were just on and see if we get some more. Stay tuned, y'all. Let's get some more flounder. Yes! That might be better. Yep. That looks like the same one you just caught. He's a keeper. Alright, well, there's our second keeper of the day. Well, actually, our third, but the first one I put back. He's about the same size as that one, but I'm keeping this one. Yeah, about 15 and a half. A little small, but we'll take it because it has been a little bit of a grind. Just caught that other flounder on this thing. This is another gulp, or actually not gulp. This is another Z-Man bait. I think it's called a door mat something. It's a bait specifically for flounder. And that's what that guy ate. It's just basically just a big curly tailed grub. We're gonna keep throwing around at this spot. Still at that same ledge, but we're anchored up now. If we get any more flounder, stay tuned. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Something big? Big one? There we go. Oh, bring him over here. There we go. Yeah, we need to do something with all this 
stuff right here. Oh, no. Nice. I think that'll keep. Better size. Yeah. He is about 16 and a half. Nice. All right. Fourth one or third one. That was pretty close to the boat there. We're good. I'm glad they're still here. Alright, well, you guys probably just saw my dad caught another one. So now we got three keepers in the boat. Would have had four if I had kept the one earlier. And I'm going to be kicking myself for that all day. Yeah, I'm running, we're running out of jig heads and soft plastics. My dad just caught that on a gulp shrimp. I'm currently using a live bait and we're going to see if we can get some more. It's getting late. So hopefully we can we can make some stuff happen. I'm getting bites right now. It's probably a black bass, but oh, I was snagged. All right, we're gonna see if we can get some more. Else, stay tuned and uh, see if we can get some more flounder. Alright y'all, so after that we ended up heading in and uh, we didn't catch any more fish that day. And unfortunately that was the last day of flounder season for us, or at least the last video that I'm going to be putting out of flounder season. And you know, it was a very short one, it was only two weeks long this year, and I wish it was longer, but it just wasn't, and it is what it is. I only ended up getting two videos out of this one. I wish I could have got more. And you know, after this day, a big hurricane came through in the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, didn't do any damage, I don't think, as, as far as I know, it didn't do any damage like on the East Coast or anything, but it definitely created a lot of swell, a lot of big waves. And so the swell was really big, so it was kind of hard, and it was definitely really rough to get out and do some like near shore, even offshore fishing. But with those bigger swells, it made the waves really good. And so me and my buddies were surfing and stuff, and we just never really ended up getting out to do more flounder fishing so as far as this year's flounder season goes i only got two videos out of it i wish i could have got more but like i said it was only two weeks and it was just very very fast and i'm sorry that i got this video out a little bit later too i wanted to get this out you know before flounder season ended but it was short and i just wasn't ready to post it yet um got sidetracked with a lot of surfing and stuff but anyways y'all before i end today's video i just wanted to talk about the rod reels baits what i was using to find these fish the mapping and stuff and explain to you guys a little bit more on exactly what we were doing. So what I was using this year and also last year, I did really well on this. This is just a Z-Man diesel minnow on a Z-Man and iStrike jig head. This is the striper jig head, I think, or the striper head. We're using this in three quarter ounce and one ounce. I'm just switching sizes depending on how fast we're drifting, how fast the current is, if the wind's really strong and stuff. We were able to use the uh, three quarter ounce while we were anchored. If you're anchored, you know, you don't need as much of a weight because you're just sitting in the same spot. Just fan casting around the boat while we were anchored up and we were able to catch them flying or doing that. And then when we were drifting, I switched over to that one ounce jig head and basically I was dropping it right at the boat and we would drift over, over you know, the ledges, the live bottom, the reefs and stuff, whatever we were fishing. If the current was any stronger, or the wind was blowing anymore, I probably would have to go on to a one and a half ounce or maybe a two ounce jig head. And as far as the baits go, you know, the Z-Man diesel minnow is something that I've been using a lot of and I used it a lot last year. Uh, I kind of mix it up with the colors, really just mostly natural stuff because out in the ocean, where I was at, you know, it's pretty clear, but if you're fishing in dirtier water, go with something a little bit more bold, like a white or a chartreuse color, something that can stand out a little bit more. In this clear water, I was using more translucent, more natural colors like this Houdini color. And you can even go with something a little bit more fluke style, like a Z-Man jerk shad i've heard these work really well and then i was also even using something like this which is a big curly tail grub this is the z-man door matadors in a hot chartreuse color it's a six inch curly tail grub and i did end up catching a flounder on it i, I would have probably preferred this in more of like a white color for the clear water they were fishing or even something a little bit more natural but the chartreuse caught us a flounder caught us a fish and um, i was really only using those because we ended up running out of the other soft plastics and we we're just running through them we we're catching a ton of black bass, a ton of lizard fish, and they're just tearing up the soft plastics. You know, we, we, we ended up starting to run out at the end of the day and had, having to use some random stuff. My dad ended up throwing on some gulp shrimp, which is another great bait that you can use. And he caught a flounder doing that. So really just kind of mixing it up with the, with the different soft plastics. And you can even go with live bait. You can just do the same type of stuff that we were doing, casting it around or just dropping it straight down with a Carolina rig. Just make sure you wait a little bit before you actually set the hook on those fish because they do, you know, have to, to 
eat it up a little bit for those live baits. I'll probably wait 10 seconds or so before actually setting the hook. And then as far as the rod and reel goes, I was using a six foot six medium heavy fast action rod with a 4,000 size reel. You know, I kind of like this shorter rod for jigging, but my dad was using a seven foot six medium fast action rod with a 3,000 size reel. And he was doing the same exact thing that I was, and he was able to catch fish on it just fine. And then for mainline, we were both using 20 pound braid, 20 to 15 pound braid will work good. And then for a leader, we're using 30 pound mono or fluoro. And so now moving on to what we are using and how we're finding these fish. And so what we're using is something like this. You can probably find something like this map at just about any tackle store on the coast. You can probably find something like this. Basically, it's just a, a map with a bunch of different spots on it. You see you got the beach here. This is a map from the New River to the Cape Fear River, kind of like the Wilmington area. I'm sure they have a map like this for all areas around the coast. As you can see, it just has a bunch of different little spots on it. And then on the back here, it has all of the spots listed with coordinates. As so we would find a spot on here, go in and find it on this back part where it's all listed, enter the coordinates into our map or into our GPS. And then once we arrived at the spot, we would drive around, kind of graph for a little bit, find where all that structure is, whatever we're fishing, whether it was a ledge, a reef, a live bottom, and just use our 2D sonar to kind of see, you know, what was on the bottom, where that structure was and stuff. Once we found it, we would mark it on our GPS and then either decide to drift over it and jig while we're drifting or anchor over top of it and fan cast around the boat. Both seem to be working for us on this day, depending on how fast the current and the wind is going. You know, sometimes you just drift too fast and you're not able to present the bait like you, like you need to be doing. And so we would just end up anchoring over the spot, fan casting, if we don't get bit after a few a few minutes we just move around a little bit shift around try to figure out where those flounder are and that's how we got it done that's uh, kind of what we figured out so with all that being said y'all I really hope that it could help any of y'all out and I uh, really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video uh, if you're new here what's up my name is Jamie I'm from North Carolina primarily a bass fisherman but I've been getting a lot more into saltwater fishing I'm gonna be doing a lot of both here in the future so if you haven't subscribed yet definitely consider it because it'll mean a lot to me and for everyone who is subscribed and has been supporting me I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And uh, with all that being said, y'all, I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Share this video with a friend if you think they might enjoy it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.